10. All right, uh, welcome to the show. World Soccer Radio on the uh, Sports Byline USA Radio Network. I'm Nick Eber with Danny Page today. Hello. And Danny, we've got a big show today, and it's a, a topic that is, uh, I won't say near and dear to my heart, but it is certainly one that I'm enjoying. Uh, one that It's I... pretty near, and it's quite dear, I would say, <laughs> at this point. One you're, I... you're pretty fired up at the futility of Manchester United. I am, Danny, and the question is, we've been, we've been talking about this on and off for um, a number of shows, and the question is, is there a crisis at Man United? And I think we've come to the consensus that there is a crisis at United at this point. Maybe we're late to the party here, Daniel. <laughs> yeah. Oh, maybe I'm we're not, late to the uh... party. I don't know. I, I don't think we're late to the party. I think we both, uh, people on this show know we don't love Man United. I think we've done a good job for the most part of sort of holding back and backing Moyes because everybody likes Moyes as a man, but really there are some major, major questions. We're going to delve a lot more into it today with Nick Webster uh, coming up here. Right, Nick Webster from Real Footy Talk will be joining us as well. We're going to ask where those Man United fans are going. Uh, and uh, the, the big question, uh, Danny, is David Moyes to blame for this? Uh, I know we all have uh, different discussions, different thoughts about that, as well as, of course, is it the title everything? Or maybe a Champions League run would be, you know, good consolation prize. Uh, these are the questions today we're going to ask you. Uh, World Soccer Radio Sports Byline USA, 800-878-PLAY. 800-878-PLAY. Of course, you can find us in studio at that number. Or send us a tweet at World Soccer Radio. Uh, at World Soccer Radio. Uh, once again, Danny, we're going to be joined by Nick Webster from RealFootyTalk.com, which is uh, going to be great because Nick has written a series of articles about this. And uh, I know, Danny, you're just bursting with opinions. Yeah, I absolutely am. And I've sort of been the good cop in this whole thing uh, in some ways, Nick. But I I'm excited to, to get Nick Webster's opinion where he thinks United are. I still have a feeling that they can and will make a push for a Champions League place, but I, I might be in the minority there. We'll find out today. All right. Uh, once again, World Soccer Radio Sports Byline USA. Big hello to our men and women in uniform listening on American Forces, as well as uh, those people listening on the affiliate stations of the Sports Byline Network network, or on uh, TuneIn.com or on iHeartRadio.com or at WatchWSR.com or through uh, World Soccer Talk. Man, we are everywhere, Danny. Everywhere. Sadly, we are everywhere. We are invading people's homes throughout the planet. All right. Uh, it is break time. Now is a great time to use the loo. If you have to do that sort of thing, uh, there is no better time than right now to do that uh, so that uh, you'll be ready to kick it all off when we come back on the other side of the break. World Soccer Radio.
Welcome back to the show, World Soccer Radio, Sports Byline USA, Radio Network, and Nick Eber, Danny Page with you. Uh, by the way, we're with you uh, every weeknight from uh, 9 p.m. Eastern Time right here on the Sports Byline USA Radio Network. And uh, it is a pleasure to be with you. And, you know, Danny, uh, well, let's get right into the topic, shall we? Because one of the things that Sir Alex Ferguson said, and I wish I had the audio clip of this, so I know our uh, listeners and viewers will forgive me for not uh, having all the prep work done for today's show that I should. But one of the things that Sir Alex Ferguson... We'll let it slide this one time around, Nick. No, thank you, Danny. One of the things Alex Ferguson said when he came to the helm at Man United was that he was going to knock Liverpool off their effing perch. Mm-hmm. And, of course, you have to remember that at the time that he came in, Liverpool were the dominant team in Europe, the dominant Should team in Should I be the England. one to say it, Nick? But he did. And he did. I'm sorry. And he I'm did. sorry. No, no. I know, you... I know that hurts, man. No, no. He, he no, it, it, It's a fact. I mean, you know, it, it, yeah, it, it doesn't go down well, but that's the fact of the matter and that's the truth. <clears throat> but the interesting thing is... Is it possible that the one that's knocked Manchester United off their perch, and indeed they have been on a perch during this Premier League era, has been none other than Sir Alex Ferguson himself, possibly with his poorly timed wow. retirement added to... Let me back up, Danny. No, no, no. I, I'm actually following you on that. Maybe it's not a poorly timed retirement. Maybe it's an ill-planned transitional period. How's that? It's uh, maybe a more palatable way to put it. But maybe sure. with his ill-timed uh, transitional period, he has, uh, in some manner, actually undermined their success over the last 10 years. Yeah, that, that makes sense. That he, it, but, but here's the thing, Nick, that when you look at the transition and when he wanted to do it, considering what he's done at United, shouldn't he be allowed to leave when he wants, on the terms he wants, having made the, the buys and the sales that he wants? Really? I, I mean... Shouldn't he have the right to go out as ever he wants to? If he wanted to walk off the pitch butt naked, defecating uh, on the Stretford end, they'd let him do that. Well, I don't think they'd let him do that, Danny. But uh, okay. no, I don't think but so. But you understand what I'm no, saying? I, 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 that, I see what you're saying. That he should be able you're... to do what he wants and leave as he wants. Yeah, but is doing what you want destroying the thing that you created? Yes, it is at this point. Because I think that's actually what he's done. Now, of course, I don't think that he's, he went into this, Danny, thinking that that's what he was going to do. But, you know, it's a combination. It's a combination of uh, Alex Ferguson leaving, leaving a cast of characters that maybe, maybe was sort of unique to Alex Ferguson in his ability to, to sort of wring every drop of quality out of a squad that maybe wasn't that overwhelmed with quality. Uh, mm-hmm. His ability to uh, handle the transfer market, the, the points that he was worth personally over a season, and I think we all agree that he's probably worth 10 points a season. The Damn. fact that he, that he himself was a very lucrative uh, figure, a very um, attractive figure at the helm of Man United that was involved in players wanting to come and play for him. And I think we're finding out that more and more players wanting to come to play for Sir Alex Ferguson as opposed to Man United. Look, not that Man United isn't a great brand, but if you're comparing Man United and Chelsea or Man United and City or Man United and Barcelona or Man United and Madrid or Monaco or, or, or PSG, now. you know, with Alex Ferguson at the helm, maybe it was just that bit more attractive. But now as that far he's as not brand, there, maybe no, they're I, just one. I think as far as brand, Man United is probably three in the world and where players want to be behind Real Madrid and Barcelona. To me, Nick, here's the greatest. Really, issue. You don't think Man City or Chelsea would be up there? No, not a, maybe this year, maybe right now because they're struggling. Right. But Man United is a dream club because of the size of Old Trafford, because they've dominated. Remember last night we talked about the, the high definition era, yeah. kind of the group of kids that are growing up watching football uh, throughout the world, so many games. And that high definition era has seen so many huge games played at the Theater of Dreams over the last 20 years. Here, here to me is maybe a central issue, okay? Not just Robin Van Persie and, and that, you know, sort of shortcoming and, and that short-term hire. But let me ask you this question. Who hired David Moyes? Why was David Moyes hired? Who made that decision? Well, apparently Alex Ferguson was exactly. the one that made the exactly. decision. Exactly. If, if <laughs> the United Brass had been able to bring in who they wanted, or if perhaps Mourinho had been brought in, this team would be in a really different place. That, that Do you really to me think is, so? Do you really think so, Danny? I think Mourinho could have uh, – Mourinho would have looked at things in the summer and 
you know, he wouldn't have come in on July 1. He would have come right. in in June, on June 1, and he would have said, first thing, get me Matt Hummels. Boom. They're going to go out and they're going to sign a 30 million pound. Or, or get me Tiago Silva. Get me one of the top center halves in the world. And if you put the, the Borussia Dortmund center half in there, or you put Silva, who, who is such a bright Silva, spot. Yeah. Silva, Silva. Um, who is such a bright spot in central defense, both for club and country. That would have been the first order of business, and Jose would have tied that up by July 1st, by the day Moyes is yeah. in office. Then he's going to go out and get a defensive midfielder. And, and Jose is basically going to say, listen, you're not going to score against us here at Old Trafford. And, and I think they would have been in a much stronger position. Moyes was not ready for this. Uh, he never should have been advised to come in on July 1st. And, and they should have kept the chief executive in place uh, for, for at least a year as well. It was a complete uh, collection of calamities that have led to this demise, and Ferguson is all at the top of it. Yeah, well, actually, I'm not going to argue with what you're saying, Danny. I think that you're absolutely correct. Uh, I think anyone that is involved in corporate transitions or corporate takeovers or uh, corporate restructuring will know that you know, if, you, if you have a failing company, you bring in a change agent. You bring in somebody who's going to rip it to shreds, build it up again, make it into pieces, sell those pieces off, and get the value for it that way. Right. Man United are a championship ten. I don't mean. I don't mean. Yeah. The, uh, not uh, yet. Let's not go too yeah. far. They're not in the championship. No, that's not what I mean. You know, they are a, a title-winning team. They are the current holders of the Premier League title. They are top of the English football pyramid and have been on and off for the entire Premier League era. Why do you destroy what you bring in if there was not a realization from Sir Alex Ferguson that maybe what they had in there was maybe not nearly as good as it was? Maybe Alex Ferguson recognized what the media was saying all of last year, that even though United ran away at the, with the title by, by, what, 11 points last season? Right. Uh, you know, maybe that was the worst title-winning Man United team in, you know, living memory. Let me ask you this. When you look at United... But, oh, but hold on, Dan. Let me just interrupt oh, you. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Because I'm sorry. if it wasn't, if they didn't make that realization, why on earth would they be putting the entire organization through the sort of turmoil that they're putting them through now if they're not preparing for a massive rebuild? It, it is going to be a massive rebuild. Think, think about it this way, okay? Man City, obviously the richest team in the league. They spend so much money. Maybe comparing United and City isn't a great example, but I'm going to go ahead and do so. How many United players in your mind would start in United's first 11 would start in City's first 11? Wayne Rooney. That's it. That um, maybe, maybe Carrick over Fernandinho, I think, is, is possibly, a no. Possibly. Maybe, probably not. De Gea? But it, but it's, De Gea? Yeah, maybe the, the Gea, Gea, Joe over Joe Hart. Hart. Is, I mean, but certainly Rooney would be in the first. Yeah, and Van Persie. No question. And Van Persie if he's uh, fit. Based on this year's form, I'd no, easily no. have Alvaro Negredo. Yeah, no, but I'm saying if he's fit. If Van per if it, if we're talking about the Robin Van Persie that won the uh, the the won the Golden Boot last year, then uh, maybe maybe that. But Van be. Persie's getting to an age, Nick, isn't he? Where you look and and you know he's 30 years old now. You say. You know, he's getting a little older. He's not going to be the same player that he was. He will never be the player again that he was last year. I don't think so. I don't think he will either. And, I mean, this we talked about this before, and we've mentioned this in previous shows, that if you're going to gamble on a player of that age who's been that injury-prone over his, over his career, you're doing it so that you can get that return right now, not next year, not the following year. So when Ferguson brought him in, he wanted Van Persie's goals now. And he got them, and he won the title by 11 points. The thing that's so preposterous, too, is the amount of money that he paid, uh, you know, to bring in someone with only a year left on his contract. It was like 25 million pounds. Well, uh, right, and he did it because he needed the goals, and he needed them now. I mean, you know, he wasn't going to lose the title on goal differential ever again. I mean, this is what the Which, old man said, and power to him. I mean, you know, that's the way it works, right, Danny? Which, absolutely, and really quickly, I think Dortmund should have sold Lewandowski last summer on, under the same pretenses. All right, so World Soccer Radio, Sports Byline, USA Radio Network, Nick Ebron, Danny Page with you. Uh, we're going to step aside. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back with Nick Webster from RealFootyTalk.com. Nick's been very vocal on this uh, subject, so we will join him here in just a moment. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere.
10. All right, uh, welcome back to the show. World Soccer Radio on the Sports Byline USA Radio Network. I'm Nick Eber, alongside Danny Page, and we're joined by a very special guest, uh, Mr. Nick Webster, who's on our Skype guest line uh, with Danny uh, from realfootytalk.com. Uh, Nick, uh, thanks for joining us. My pleasure, and Happy New Year to you two. Very handsome gentlemen. Why, uh, thank you, Nick. Uh, so listen, the topic of this show <laughs> is uh, actually Manchester United, surprisingly enough, Nick. I know something that uh, uh, all three of us that are right now on the air uh, on the Sports Byline USA radio network uh, may be relishing a little bit. There's a little bit of schadenfreude going on right now, to use a, a big German word, about what's happening at Old Trafford. Uh, Nick, I think we can all say firmly there is a crisis at Old Trafford. Uh, my question for you, uh, Webster, is, uh, is David Moyes to blame for this? Absolutely not. Wow. You can point the finger straight at the man he replaced, Sir Alex Ferguson. Yes, Fergie won a boatload of trophies. But you have to ask the question, don't judge him on what he did. Judge him on what he left behind. And he has left behind a corpse. Let's be quite honest here. So Alex Ferguson did nothing to improve this Manchester United team over the last two, three seasons. And now you're seeing exactly what he's getting from it. And I wouldn't be surprised if Moyes gets sacked before the end of the season because Manchester United and the media haven't got the balls or the stones to say, Ferguson, you're responsible for this mess. But, but doesn't Nick, doesn't he have some right to do that with all the titles he brought to this club, with the fact that, as Nick uh, Gieber mentioned earlier in the show, he knocked Liverpool off their perch? I, I know he left them in tatters, but doesn't he have some right to do that, given all that, that he has brought to this club over a 20-year period? Why would you have a right to ruin a club? Listen, Ferguson, Given that, you know, I'm, I'm not going to take anything away from Sir Alex Ferguson. The man is the greatest manager in the history of English football. Maybe in, in the history, history of, the game, of probably. Yeah. world football. Yeah. However, I think that Sir Alex Ferguson maybe started to lose the plot a few years ago. He didn't keep up with the times. And that's why this team is struggling now. So, yes, you can say Sir Alex Ferguson had the right to do what he wanted. But I don't think Manchester United now, you know, obviously it's not the club that Sir, Sir Alex Ferguson joined. It's now a behemoth. It's, it's an industry. It's a global industry. And you can't let a global industry die. What is Manchester United right now if we were going to compare it to like an internet company? It's AOL. They shone huge. They were the biggest thing going. And now nobody even knows about them. And, so, wow. and United, <laughs> United are going to finish this season empty-handed. Yeah. Tell me what trophy they are going to win. Well, Nick, uh, you the know. The League Cup. Well, They're going to win the League <laughs> Cup. Hold on a second. So, Nick, it's interesting because in the last segment, I was, <laughs> which, of course, you didn't listen to, but uh, I'll forgive no. you for that. I was pointing out that maybe the fact that it wasn't just a managerial change, but they allowed Moyes to come in and change the scouting network, the backroom staff, the training staff, I mean, the complete football operations side of it, and they changed, they brought in Ed Woodward, so the business side of it all had a complete rooting. Maybe that is indicative of the fact that Alex Ferguson recognized last year that they had papered over some very, very, very serious shortcomings on this team last season to win the title, and that Moyes was not going to be able to continue this, and that it was going to be a sort of forced restructuring structuring whether they like it or not and maybe in some ways this is recognition by Sir Alex Ferguson that the you know the move that he made to bring in Robin Van Persie last year to sort of paper over the problems was just that and that this United team is exactly what the media have been saying one of the worst United teams ever to win the uh, uh, to win the title in in living memory well that's pleasant isn't it paper over the cracks and then piss off and let the other man hold the bag I mean is that what Sir Alex Ferguson is all about I've, you know, I've, I know people in the game back in England, and they do say that Fergie is a nasty piece of work. And 
And maybe that's what he is. Maybe right. the, the facade that he has, oh, we all think he's very cuddly and a genius. Hey, he's pulled it off brilliantly. All right, Nick, just I know you're getting very heated about this. Just remember, we are on uh, the uh, terrestrial station of the Sports Byline Network and American Forces, so we've got to watch what we say here. But yes, I completely agree with you. I think <laughs> this is, you know, as I said to start the show, Sir Alex Ferguson came into United with the saying that he was going to knock Liverpool off their effing perch. And the fact of the matter is, the one that's knocked United off their, quote, effing perch is Sir Alex Ferguson himself. If he can't have it, nobody can. Right, Webster? Well, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, it's the uh, little boy syndrome. It's his ball. And uh, if you're not playing the way he likes it, well, he's taking it home with him. I yeah, mean, look, how, how, can, how can Moyes really do a job? You know, people say that, oh, Ferguson only shows up match day. You know, the camera's on him more than it is David bloody Moyes every time they're at home. I mean, the pressure Moyes is under, I, I really feel sorry for the lad. To be fair, he shouldn't have got the job in the first place. So let me just state that, you know. I mean, Manchester United is one of the three biggest jobs in the world. You don't give it to someone who yeah, has won nothing. Won nothing at Everton. Literally. Great manager, David Moyes is, for the level that he's at, all right? There's no way he can succeed at United, though, with Ferguson still looming like, you know, Uncle Fester over him. It's just impossible. Nick, I think one thing that when we talk about the shortcomings and the way Alex left, excuse me, Sir Alex, left Man United, does it have everything to do really with personnel in your mind? Did he just tend to believe, uh, have sort of a stubborn belief in the players he'd brought in and that they'd actually succeed? Or, or do you think he consciously looked at this team at this time last year and said, the future is not bright? You know, I mean, because looking back now, we all should have seen. Well, actually, well, oh, hold on. Oh, Webster, before, before you answer this, uh, yesterday on the show, or the day before, I don't remember, uh, I mentioned the fact that you know, Alex Ferguson came to Man United. He had a transitional period where he didn't win anything. I think he won one FA Cup along the way early on. Then all of a sudden, this sort of golden generation came, started to come through the system for him. And he was able to build a team for, you know, decades, literally, on the backs of these, this incredible crop of young British players that came through his system. And he liberally sprinkled on top of that plenty of superstars like Eric Cantona on top of that to uh, Ruud van Nistelrooy extras to sort of make it happen and I think he was looking you know a few years ago he started looking for that same crop of sort of core players to come through to lead the team forward but it's possible that lightning struck only once for him in the Beckham Skulls gigs Neville sister era and that you know those players aren't to be found anymore how much of his success Nick Webster do you put down to that core of players which is only now finally finding their way out to pasture well a couple of things I just watched the documentary class of 92 and I'm no Man United fan but I gotta tell you this thing was class absolutely brilliant and I recommend anybody get your hands hold of it if you're a true football fan because you will see what made Manchester United great. And it was having the That's essence right. of those young boys coming together at the right time. It was lightning in a bottle. It will never happen again. But that core took United through those 10 years of incredible success and allowed the, the other players to come in and, and join a club that was already winning. But just to quickly go back to your point about Sir Alex Ferguson and, and buying players. For the last three years, we've been saying that he is begging for a creative midfield player type to replace Paul Scholes. So what did he do? He went out and replaced Paul Scholes with, oh, that's right, Paul Scholes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. really, that, that, that was the big buy. And then you've got, I mean, Ryan Giggs, ageless. But come on, for crying out loud, how can this man continue to take games by the scruff of the neck at 38, 39, and now 40 years of age? You can't tell me Kagawa is a world-class player. Tom Cleverley is still learning how to play the game. The only decent midfielder they got is Michael Carrick, and he is not a game-changer. Yeah. I mean, I don't understand why Ferguson could not attract some big-name players. I mean, other than Van Persie, who has United really bought that you've gone, wow, that was a big buy? You guys don't think Fabio, uh, Wilfred Zaha, and Danny Welbeck are the new golden generation? Will, I certainly... Wilfred who? <laughs> I mean, right? uh, listen, uh, unbelievable in the way I, I, that they I, went out and spent. 
I can't understand. I saw Sahar play uh, live. I was lucky enough to be at the uh, championship playoff last year, Watford Palace, and he was the best player on the pitch by a country mile. And yet he can't replace the 40-year-old Ryan Giggs. Fabio is a complete nutter. If he plays another game for United, Moyes is completely out to lunch. Same I mean, thing goes for Kagawa. He was the, the Bundesliga player of the year before he came to England. Well, the Bundesliga isn't, you know, it's not the Premier League. It's, I know. It's, but, it's, it's, no, it's no, a, no, no, no. Come on. Come, come on. But these players should be capable, is all I'm saying. They, they should be capable of, of at least contributing. Yeah, uh, but I think, if you're going to buy a player, though, go out and buy a Bastian Schweinsteiger. Yeah, that's right. You yeah. know, a Marco buy, Royce. Buy, buy a world class player who's the best player in his country. Spend 50 million quid, whatever it is you have to spend. Or 50 million and one. 50 million and one. <laughs> I think their biggest shortcoming this past summer is that they were offered Mesut Ozil for less than Arsenal paid, what, six million less, and said no. I mean, that's, that's really what has doomed them this year. Well, it was, it was a crazy decision, but I think Moyes was still feeling very tentative at that point. Didn't really, uh, I think, have the complete confidence of the, of the Glazier family. And, and like Nick Rick rightly pointed out, this whole changing of the backroom personnel and I don't think he had the balls to go out and buy an Otsil. So he went for the safe bet. He bought a player that he knew. And as we all know, Fellaini, wonderful player that he yeah. is, he's not a Manchester United player. No, he's not. No, he's not at all. You're listening to World Soccer Radio on the Sports Byline USA Radio Network. Uh, we are talking with Nick Webster from Real Footy Talk. Uh, com. Nick, a, a great site, and uh, we hope everyone will go and listen to your, uh, uh, your musings and your opinions, because that's uh, what it's all about. Uh, hopefully, Nick, you'll be able to stick around uh, with us for a few more minutes. Oh, yes, I've got a, I, I, th I think we've got some injury time, so... All right. <laughs> all right, well, we have to go to break. Uh, we will be right back. By the way, if you have a thought or an opinion, would like to sound off about this, we'd love to hear from you on Twitter, at World Soccer Radio. That's at World Soccer Radio. Of course, you can always call us in studio at 800-878-PLAY, 800-878-PLAY. Once again, World Soccer Radio, Nick Ebert, Danny Page with Nick Webster. We'll be right back after this.
10 seconds. All right, uh, welcome back to World Soccer Radio on the Sports Byline the USA Radio Network. Nick Gieber and Danny Page with you as we are each and every weeknight from 9 p.m. Eastern Time right here on this very Sports Byline uh, Radio Network. And we are joined today by our very special guest uh, from RealFooty.com. Uh, Real Footy Talk. Come on. You know, what am Disaster, I doing? Disaster, you know, makes me come on the show for absolutely now and then bullses up the tagline. Well, I can't, uh, I can't help it, Nick. I'm so View sorry. View from the terraces. View from the terraces, Thank yes. Uh, Nick Webster from realfootytalk.com uh, joins us on the show. And, of course, the topic is, has been, and will continue to be uh, Manchester United. Uh, so, Nick, uh, you have written some fantastic pieces at realfootytalk.com about this very issue with Manchester United. We have basically spent and will be spending this entire show talking about it because if you are new to football or if you're listening to us in Sports Byline, you're like, hey, where's my NBA talk? Where's my college football talk? Where's my NFL talk? You know, this would be like, this is like what's going on right now in Los Angeles with the Los Angeles Lakers, where you have, you know, a, a storied team that's noted, noted for winning it all, all the time, having to literally tear itself apart to hopefully rebuild itself into a, a champion, a, a side of champions in the future. It's difficult, it's awful, it's awkward, and there's enough problems here in the Los Angeles area with the Lakers, with fans that were packing out the Staples Center, now not willing to pay the high price for tickets. My answer, my question for you, Nick Webster, is United going to suffer the same fate, particularly with all their foreign fans? Is this restructuring going to hurt somehow their large amount of foreign revenue that comes from places like America? Oh, from your lips to God's ears. Please let it happen, please. Of course it is. Listen, at the end of the day, 95% of fans are fair weather fans. We're all glory hunters. We all want to support a winning team. And Manchester United, global brand that they are. Well, let me tell you something about global brands. Global brands need big superstar players, not just one and not just uh, one and a half because he's always bloody injured now. You need superstars littered throughout the team. And there is nothing sexy about this Manchester United team. And fans, especially Fairweather fans, they like sexy. And if they don't get it, they're going to hop off to the next team, which would be Manchester City, Real Madrid, or Barcelona, because they're sexy. Well, how about Chelsea? I mean, and I can see them. Sure. You, you know, it's interesting, Nick, because, uh, you know, you and I, uh, Nick Webster and, and Danny, uh, you just don't have the age on us yet, uh, but you'll get there, trust me. Uh, you know, we, we've been... Hey, I remember, I'm 30 today. Uh, kind okay? of. Happy, Bloody, oh, my God. <laughs> this is a whole new uh, a whole new world to me, man. A happy birthday to you, Danny. Yeah. Thank you, brother. Actually, it's a pleasure to 20, spend it with you, Mr. Webster. 20 years older than you. That's scandalous. Uh, yeah. 20 years wiser. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And yes, uh, uh, Danny, happy birthday, my friend. Happy Thanks, birthday. Uh, but, you know, some of us, uh, Nick Webster, that have been around watching this game grow for the last 15, 16 years in this country, and I know you've even got a few more years than I do on it here. Uh, very few people do. Uh, watching the game grow here. You know, we've seen so many fans come that are new. I call them My Little Pony fans because Nick Webster, while uh, we were busy uh, doing the legwork and the grunt work and, and, be, and doing football when it wasn't sexy, they were watching My Little Pony. Uh, <laughs> it's the best. The My Little Pony fans. You know, this for them is, is absolutely, you know, this is a major trauma in their life because they've never known united to be struggling and then when of course chelsea went on their back-to-back -back champion uh they won their back-to-back -back titles i try not to say championships because it's too confusing for people uh won their tied their back-to-back -back titles you know there were all, all sorts of plenty of brand new my little pony fans that flocked to chelsea not realizing that just a few years ago they were within a day of going bankrupt thanks to ken bates and chelsea village but you know history is very selective for these people how are United fans here in the States going to handle this, Webster? Because all of a sudden, and it's not just fans, Nick, it's the media as well. Well, I think it's, it's, it's going to be a, a really rude awakening for them, and you're going to see some true loyalty, or not, as the case may be. Uh, I think that it's going to be very easy for them to drop Manchester United, kind of like when you get up in the morning and you find a pair of underwear and you go, oh, yes, they're not mine. You know, <laughs> it's, they're they're going to get that rid happen, of the does that, have, does that happen to you a lot, Nick? 
because uh, you know I, I know where your wife is. She's at your house, so I think I'll happily send her a copy of this. Thankfully, not too often. But yeah, I mean, I'm I'm already sensing it right now. I'm very good friends with a, a gentleman who runs Premiership Talk. He's a you know died in the wall Man United fan. And there's already it's only been three days of a complete and utter disaster. And he's already thinking, you know what, that City team, I, I kind of like, you know, if I, if I say I'm still a Manchester fan, can I just swap to City? And I think for American fans, it's very easy for them to switch allegiances. In, right, right, in England, because they would be next to impossible. But here, you can get away with it. I'm what? telling you because, and I'll tell you this for a fact, all right, every year I support the team that's featured on Hard Knocks, and nobody seems to have a problem with it. <laughs> well, hey, hang on a sec here. I, I have a little bit more faith in the American fan. I, I think that as the English game has come to the American fan, they embrace the idea even years before NBC started the campaign that they have, they embrace the idea of who's your team. And I think people bought that shirt and really will stick to that team. And believe me, I, I, I understand as much as anyone the nature of a Fairweather fan, okay? I am fully on the Seattle Seahawks bandwagon because I know the head coach, Pete Carroll. So I know what it's like to just jump on board and then jump ship as an L.A. Uh, person who loves the NFL. Um, I, I know no loyalties. But I think it will be different. And, and I think that for a long time, we'll see things like we did during the Champions League, Nick, and Nick, where there would be a marquee match going on on a Tuesday, but for some reason, we're watching Man United and, and you know, Basel. Not a Gunnett. chance I think they will in hell, be, Danny. Oh, I think I'm they sorry, will still mate. be the lead team here in, in the U.S. Uh, you're completely out to lunch. If, if Man United still stink well, and, and Real Madrid and Barcelona are on the TV, I tell you, there's only one game American youngsters are watching it and I know this for a fact because I'm coaching high school right now I got 30 kids who come out every day and they've all got two or three strips that they wear and they ain't the Man United home the Man United away and the Man United third strip there's a Man United strip yeah. when they're doing well there's a Chelsea strip when Chelsea are doing well and then there's a Barcelona and I'm like who do you support and they're going oh Ronaldo's great today I'm, I'm a Barca fan all the way yeah well, remember I don't ever come into contact with uh, children so <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't really understand the way that those fickle, small no, human beings work. Well, look, I don't think it's going to be one way or another. There are true United fans here in the States. There are true fans that have come to United. It's going to be difficult for the fans that, that have come in because, and support United because you know, they win all the time and they're always on the telly. But in fact, one of, for me, more even than where did the United fans go, I'm going to ask the question, how is the mainstream media going to deal with the fact that their beloved man United, you know, I sent a tweet out about... Mainstream media? Yeah. What is this, Fox News? Uh, all right. No, 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 I, I'm talking about... He's becoming I'm talking Sarah about, Palin in front of our eyes. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking about, like, shall we say, NBC with their coverage. I, I saw right. Kyle Martino the other day make a comment, and by the way, I think he's grown beautifully into the role there, Kyle. I think he's improved enormously. Uh, but I will say this. I mean, he's sitting there after they lose to Swansea, uh, telling me that, you know, telling me as a viewer that they're going to still have a title push, that they, he thinks they're still going to finish top four. And, and, you know, I'm just looking at this thinking, you know, what, what did you just watch? You watched a team show no ambition, lose a cup competition. And believe you me, the FA Cup is one thing that Man United supporters feel is theirs by right because they won it more than anyone else, all right? This is a hugely important cup for Man United supporters. They go out to Swansea at home looking completely like they need, you know, a year's supply of NRX in the locker room, okay? Uh, so, uh, you know, how can you look at It's the mainstream media in denial. They keep putting United on the telly when there are other better games going on. Webster? But Nick, you, you, when's you the change? Not, when's the change? Oh, we both, we both media. come from a TV background. We know exactly why United are on the telly. NBC have paid 85 million smackaroonies, and unfortunately, in this country, I mean, let's be honest, we're we're in the minority here as soccer fans. Uh, the only team the rest of America has ever heard of is probably Manchester United. You know, you can, you can't have Everton on the telly. Yeah, you, you know, you, you well, can't you want have them. You want on more. the telly. More Liverpool, Webster. More week. Liverpool. More Liverpool. Less United. Nobody's even heard of Liverpool. What league. currency is Smackaroonies? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's, it's fascinating because, you know, again, I compare it to the Lakers because we're looking at very, very similar situations here, by the way. I mean, you know, the Lakers, no, obviously. we're not. No, we are. We are looking at very similar situations. The Lakers will be able to rebuild more quickly than United will. 
Uh, well, but, because but, they only need bloody five players, That's mate. exactly right. That's exactly right, Webster. You are so right. That's exactly the point. But, you know, I still... But nowadays, it's getting more and more difficult to find the Lakers on national television as opposed to, Danny, that television network you work for, which is Time Warner Sports, and I don't even get them on my, on my dish network. That, uh, that, see, that's a you problem. That's not a Laker problem here. I, I understand what you're saying, but there will still be Laker fans throughout the country, oh, there will throughout be. Los Angeles, waiting for their return. And, and knowing what the Lakers do, we know that, that at the same token, Man United will be back in the same way the Lakers are back. I don't think, I, I, no, because it's a totally different world that United are coming back to. United are not going to be the richest team in the Premier League. They're not going to have the best squad in the Premier League. They're not going to have the most attractive manager in the Premier League. It's going to be rough sledding, to use hockey terms, Webster. Here's, here's, a, here's a thought for you, and, and, and this conversation has just made it pop into my head, so it, it's probably completely worthless. But if I'm not mistaken, the Glazers are pretty nasty, evil businessmen. Would you not be surprised if they tried to punt Manchester United to make a very tidy fortune on it? Because without the... <laughs> no, seriously, without no. the old money, I mean, the Glazers don't have the money to compete with anybody, do they? I mean, the last thing I heard is they were practically skin, and they still owe how much for the club? Something like 500 million, and the, and the interest and the balloon payments are completely out of control, and no one's even spoken about that in the last six months. So then, Webster, how important is a top four finish? Is it everything for the future of United this year? Uh, well, I think it's, it's important for United every year they've got to finish in the top four. No, They've but if they don't make it this year, will the financial fallout for not making a Champions League spot be, be uh, so much that it'll force United to sell, force the Glazers to sell? I think so, yeah, I do. Danny and, Page, what and, say you? And, 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 and the thing is, though, there's going to be no shortage of buyers. No, that's for sure, Webster. Exactly. E even if I, it could be for the better if they were to bring in a new owner, somebody that's just willing Great. to sink plenty of money into the club. And, and frankly, they can bring in a very wealthy owner that can go out and spend what he wants. And it'll be legitimized by financial fair play because they have by far the biggest ground in England, third biggest in the major European leagues, plus their kit and TV deals. I think United will benefit if the Glazers decide to sell them, which frankly, they probably will. Yeah, that's a great point you bring up, Webster. I, I hadn't actually thought about that, but you know, you're right. This may be the catalyst that forces them to sell. Maybe they have sucked the lifeblood out of United while it's at its peak, just like a vampire, just like good old Sir Alex Ferguson. The Glazers and Sir Alex can now fly around, around Manchester at night, sucking the blood from the living, and during the day, they can go bury themselves in the earth of Old Trafford, deep within the catacombs. I, I tell you, you've missed your calling, Mr. Gee, but you should be a script writer. <laughs> oh, you know, I'd be any sort of anything that pays, really, at this point in my life. <laughs> All right, uh, listen, Nick Webster, give us uh, just a few seconds on Real Footy Talk. Okay, so realfootytalk.com. It's me giving a look at the game in a sort of unpolished way. It's, it's very <laughs> fandom-like. Uh, if you're looking for punctuation and great prose, you're not going to find it there. But you are going to find a, an extremely honest voice that has not been corporized at all. Well, until I get some decent sponsorship anyway. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> www.realfootytalk.com, or you can also visit the Real Footy Talk page on Facebook, Facebook slash realfootytalk.com. And don't forget, you can also tweet me at Nick Webster. All right, Nick uh, Webster, an absolute pleasure. Uh, we'll get, listen, we have to have you on again next week. We get a little further along and uh, we'll see what this weekend and the premiership brings. Who knows? Maybe we'll have more surprises, more surprises. All right, uh, this is World Soccer Radio on the Sports Byline USA Radio Network. I want to thank Nick Webster for joining us. Uh, Nick and Danny with you. We will be right back after these messages. Don't go anywhere. It just gets better. I, I do promise.
15 seconds. Five. All right, uh, welcome back to the show, World Soccer Radio. Nick Gabriel and Danny Page. Want to thank Nick Webster for coming on. Danny uh, is always he, he's a great guest, isn't he? Yeah, I mean Nick is such an incredible wealth of knowledge, and and you just have to love Nick Webster's perspective, you know, and just the the ideas he brings and how he looks at the game. I think pretty soon though we need to have a pro United journalist on because uh, this can't uh, this can't continue. I agree. We should definitely get some balance here because, uh, well, we never have been balanced, Danny. Why? I know, seriously. <laughs> no, um, no, you're right. We, we should. It'd be interesting to get that take. And, you know, it's fascinating within the United camp themselves. There's a whole section that's sort of looking at this, rubbing their hands, because they're hoping that this is the catalyst that removes the Glazers, the hated Glazers, who I actually think have done a good job while they've been owners of United. They brought title after title after title. They supported Sir Alex Ferguson with money, with what he needed for players. And, yeah, they leveraged the team, but, you know, they've never seen United grow its global brand, brand quite as much. Maybe this is a topic for another show, Danny. Yeah, I think it is a topic for another show. We just have to see how they do over these next couple of weeks. Every week here is so crucial for United and, and how this, not just this year's team progresses, but but where the club are headed. They are on a real uh, quest for their, you know, their place in the footballing world over the next couple of years. And I think it's going to be decided in the next couple of months, Nick. Yeah, absolutely. All right, uh, folks, hope you enjoyed the show. World Soccer Radio, Sports Byline USA. Just a reminder, we're with you every, each and every weeknight. That's Monday through Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, right here on the Sports Byline Network, American Forces, TuneIn.com, iHeartRadio.com, WatchWSR.com. You can find us also on WorldSoccerTalk.com. Uh, uh, so all sorts of places, whether it's regular radio, whether it's Internet, whether it's just sticking a wire hanger on the top of your head, you can sure pick us up anywhere you would like. And we will be back on the air with you tomorrow at 9 p.m. Eastern time right here on the Sports Byline Network. And uh, once again, great programming here on Sports Byline. Coming up, uh, Mr. Ron Barr, a true legend of broadcasting right here on Sports Byline. And there's only one place you get that programming, and that is right here on this very network. You join us tomorrow at 9 p.m. Eastern time. Until then, cheers. Have a great night for me and Danny.